Hey friends, welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel. So, today, oh my gosh, today, I want to talk about what do we do if it seems like everything is failing? Because that's where I'm at, right? And that's a real reality that comes up. I talk to a lot of you guys after you buy towers and gardening is like this. And sometimes people have a hard time launching into it and then are just like pros. And sometimes people start off strong and then hit some roadblocks. And even though this type of gardening is after 20 years of experience, I can say this like very loud and I scream it very loud on this channel. This is so much easier than soil gardening, whether raised beds, no dig beds, permaculture, this is easier. This is more abundant. This provides me way more food than any of those garden systems ever did because I get consistent harvest all the time. But it's still gardening, which means it has challenges sometimes. And I think life adds to those challenges and you know, they can kind of come together when I'm not in alignment and I am not able to step up and do the things, then there is consequences. Now, again, these gardens will carry on without me for a while. And I was reminded of that today because I came out here, I just sweeped. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's some piles. It just was a mess out here. I released ladybugs and I haven't wanted to clean up because I was allowing them to do their job. Now on that topic, I actually think I may have found a solution to aphids that doesn't include introducing pests into your home or your space. I will let you guys know as soon as I get full confirmation on this. If it works, it's biological and organic and game changer for those of us who deal with aphids. I deal with aphids. I am in a uh, non-sealed garage and that is just the consequence. Aphids are just the consequence of that. I was cleaning up and just feeling discouraged and I have, like look at this. This tower has not had its own lights for weeks it's been like this. And I'm usually not neglectful like that. I enjoy gardening. I love coming out here and spending time with my plants. But if you've been following me for a while, you would probably know that I significantly injured my hand. And the consequence of that is that something as simple as unpacking and putting these lights together, these lights are so easy. Like. I really could have even asked my children to do it, so it's more of a pity party on my part than a real issue. Uh, they're so easy to put together, but I deal with significant pain and I can't fully use this hand and I know I need to maneuver my hand in a way with this particular light that's going to bother my hand. So then I've just gotten in my head about it and had a big pity party, didn't even wanna do it. So today I'm tackling things and I'm just stepping in to the problem. And there's a few things I have found when I get in these situations. Uh, first off, the gardens are not as bad as I thought. I went to harvest this rosemary because in this video we're gonna be making some brain boosting immunity shots that are incredible. Rosemary is really powerful for cleansing the blood and for brain function and these immunity shots, I just absolutely love them. So I harvested some of that and I have all this gorgeous rosemary that I cannot grow outside here um, ever and definitely not in the winter. And I was able to see, look around, that tower over there and there's some peppers forming and I've got some red or purple turnips. I'm starting to see the turnip come up on those and there's some green beans ready to harvest. And so even though my squash got overtaken by a powdery mildew because I ignored them for a week, I have other wins. So I'm trying to step into those wins. My formula when I get in a place where I'm feeling stuck, um, down you know this has made me i'm on 10 weeks with my hand and i'll explain what happened in a minute um, and it doesn't look like it's going to get better without intervention which is very upsetting to me because if you've been here a while you know like that is the modern medical system is is a last absolute last resort for me i also used to work in medical sales and specifically soft tissue implants the things you you know put inside people the little screws and the the equipment needed to um, fix soft tissue injuries and I'm, I'm not interested in being a patient in the soft tissue orthopedic world right but i guess we don't get to make those decisions so 
what I do when I'm struggling, a couple of things. Now, here's the biggest thing that's happened is I can't go to the gym and I'm a CrossFit athlete and have been for many years. I've been in the gym since I started teaching aerobics when I was 15. It's critical to my health, my mental health and my physical health. And I haven't been able to go to the gym. Every time I try, I'm re-injuring myself. So I've had to just pull back and accept like I can't go, which has been tough. But I do have a Peloton bike and then the kids accidentally broke the cord. So that was off the table for a while and that has been fixed. So what I do when I'm really struggling is get into an exercise routine. So I have laid out a routine on my Peloton. I've got some challenges I'm gonna work on for myself that are going to make me feel like I'm really progressing in something and not falling behind while I'm not able to lift weights. I am going to juice. I'm going to make immunity shots. I ordered cases of fruit. I stay on top of ordering cases of food. So I peeled and got a case of mangoes ready and we're gonna juice those today with Swiss chard. Mango and Swiss chard juice is so good and I have some Swiss chard. I wanna eat off my towers and I just get moving in that direction. I came out here and I faced reality and I started sweeping and it turns out like what felt like a huge disaster ended up being the loss of three plants. It took me 15 minutes to sweep, which I actually really enjoyed. And I sp made some spray for my powdery mildew. And I have one other problem to address. I always say never spray anything on your plants. And I actually didn't listen to my own advice. And when the aphids got a little bit out of control because I wasn't managing this space well, I sprayed my celery with some soap and the celery is not happy now. So I need to cut off all the bad leaves. It will be fine, but I need to clean that up because looking at it makes me feel like a big failure, right? Which is not true. These are just things that we, when we fall into funks, especially when you're dealing with chronic pain and illness, you know, we can buy into the lies. So what I'm doing is smelling this rosemary. That is absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna finish cleaning up this space. I'm gonna take you guys and show you some of the wins that I'm having because there are wins here. There are really, really good wins here. I'm gonna focus on those. And then we're gonna go juice. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make an incredible brain boosting immunity juice that deals with inflammation, brain function, blood cleansing. We're also gonna juice that mango and Swiss chard. If you don't juice, get this question sometimes. Sometimes people are, not juicing fans and kind of hate on the hate on the juicing world because you know we're pulling out the fiber i'm a juicer i've been juicing for let's see how old am i i've been juicing for a really long time really really long time it is critical to my mental health just like the gym and to my physical health i haven't been in the gym i have been eating overeating a little bit um, not eating is healthy when i continue to juice those things don't have the effect on me that they once did in the past. Sometimes we'll kind of go on spirals and you can, there was a time in my life when I would eat poorly and then that would stay a pattern for a long period of time before I could pull myself out of it and it required like some diet and on Monday I'm gonna start this program and those things just uh, aren't, I have found weren't healthy for me um, and juicing keeps me out of that spiral. Almost every night, regardless of what I ate that day, and that was another thing. If I ate poorly during the day, I didn't wanna like eat healthy at the end of the day because I already made poor choices one night all day and we'll start over next, we'll start over tomorrow. And then it becomes harder to start over the next day, right? I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. It seems to be a human cycle, a normal human experience with all the addictive foods that we have as a culture. but. I broke that cycle and even if I have had a bad day with food, I'm still juicing at night or taking an immunity shot and that just makes all the difference for me. So for me, bypassing my gut, because I eat a ton of fiber, I don't need more fiber in my diet. So giving my gut a rest and flooding my cells with juice and like a, an abundance of nutrition in the form of juice. Um, really works for my body. It's incredible. It's helped me in so many ways. Uh, really helped reverse a lot of skin 
issues, diet, my weight seems to stay in check even when I'm not working out and I'm not eating as healthy when I'm juicing and I think it's just because bad foods cause inflammation so we kind of swell up and the juice counteracts that and keeps me out of an inflammatory state is my theory so juicing is a huge part of my life if you are a juicer tower is a no-brainer i always have fresh greens every single day to come and juice and that's incredible because when i was buying them at the whole foods wow was that expensive so expensive and now they're finding forever chemicals even on organic foods and the whole thing is a mess right greens are amazing for calcium and making sure we get enough calcium dark leafy greens if you juice you need a tower. If you have a tower, I highly recommend trying juicing. I love it, it's been a game changer for me. So I'll show you guys my juicer inside. Let's take a little tour. So here on my home tower with the Baby Greens Extension Kit, I have lots of greens growing. I'm always heavily seeding these baby greens. We go through a ton of them. I also have some kohlrabi. The tomatoes are starting to come in and there's more greens, gorgeous beets, Here's the rosemary I discussed earlier that we're gonna juice today. The green beans are coming in on a regular interval, which is wonderful to have fresh green beans. I love to eat them raw with hummus. This is a beautiful Chinese spinach. Some peppers are starting to fruit. I have some gorgeous aloe. This is edible version that is amazing to add to your juices. And then the turnips are starting to come in. This is a purple turnip. So incredibly gorgeous. Turnip greens are one of the healthiest greens you can consume. And here's the gorgeous Swiss chard that we're going to juice today with the mangoes. Before we go inside, I'm gonna go ahead and build this light. I'm not putting it off any longer, and I thought it would take you along. I'll share my hand story, why we build this light. You don't often see me building the tower stuff here, just because I think it's so self-explanatory. Um, but if you're new, you've never tried the lights, you'll get to see how easy it is to put them together. All right, so here's our box. And I actually just ordered one more of these because I'm gonna do this tower here with all my peppers. I have amazing pepper collection here. Um, there's a few more I wanna try, but these will fill up the whole thing. Uh, there's 28 growth spots and I have 28 peppers in there. So what happened to my hand is I was on a GHD and a GHD is a piece of equipment where you lock your feet in and you do basically a back bend, touch the floor and come back up. It's an ab workout. And you can do it the other way where you're facing head down to the ground. Your feet are locked in here and you go down and up and it's a hamstring workout. I was doing the hamstring workout next to my son. We were lifting some plates and I put the weight down, leaned my body up and you can rest on this because it's holding you know, your body weight when you're not leaning forward. And I took my feet out. And then my son was like, hey, let's do a blowout session with no weights. I was like, okay. And I went down, but my feet were out already. So when I started leaning down, I started realizing I was gonna fall. We thought it was funny. It was really slow motion. And I was grabbing like this, trying to reach the floor to catch myself because it wasn't even that far. But at the same time, my feet were coming over the top of me. And when they came over my body, it just drove all my body weight straight into the ground. And unfortunately, because I was doing this in slow motion, I landed on the tip of my pinky, took the entire fall, all of my body weight. So this part of my finger broke. Um, I'm pretty sure it hyperextended backwards through here, like, you know, like went that way when it wasn't supposed to because this is the part that was broken. Uh, there was a lot of issues right through here and then went completely down sideways. So these separated. Um, I didn't see it when it happened. Obviously, it was so fast, but just based on the things that don't work anymore, seems like that's what happened. So basically, 
Um, I lost complete feeling for a while. And I think that's what made me not, I figured there was a break, but that's the not having feeling um, is kind of what made me not realize how significant the damage I had done was because I actually couldn't feel it. And so for a while I had no color or feeling in the tip of my finger, but actually it felt like my finger wasn't even attached to my hand anymore. Almost like when your foot falls asleep and it's like you don't have any control over it. It's just there, but it won't move. So it was like that for a while. And then since then, it's gotten better. Like I used to not be able to straighten my hand like this. I found a brace that's forcing it straight at night, but that's painful. And then like that is about it. That's all you're going to get. So it's swollen through here. I don't know. I think the tendon that attaches this part of your finger and goes in between here is not connected anymore. So that's what happened. All right, here's our light. And we're just gonna stick it right on. These plants have been such troopers. This is my mini cauliflower and my iceberg lettuce. And they're growing slower because they haven't had lights on them, but they've been totally fine. They have tolerated my abuse. Um, like a sticky, cord thing you can put on your tower to hold this. I don't like them, so I don't worry about them. Especially because these towers go outside in the spring and I found that that sticky thing doesn't really come off and it kind of collects dirt. So I just let my cords hang. I just try and push them. You know, if they're on top of a plant, I'll move them out of the way. So we're gonna pull these down. All right, now we're gonna put the lights on. And so I have heard like, when you're having a problem with your plants, people say, put your lights closer, put them further away, lean them up, lean them down. I've had no lights on these for weeks, like three weeks, I think. They're totally fine. The light is not your problem. Now I've done shared lights with these, you know, so they are getting light, but again, like how close they are and how far they are away isn't really a deterrent. These are putting off full spectrum light and it's covering a good amount of space. And so, yeah, it's not your lights. This is the plastic thing I mentioned. You hear that? That's an empty tank because I'm a neglectful mama gardener. Um, that is the, here's the sticky pole if you want to put your wires out of the way. I'm going to set these down so I don't crack one of them. I think it'll be fine. I'll drop these. It's not the first time I've dropped one of these. So they have this little connector piece and that goes into this little connector piece. And this is the part I knew would hurt my hand. And then the sticker. And we turn them. All right, one down. 
And the simplicity of these towers is one of the reasons I chose them. I just loved that everything was included and everything is set up for success. There's timers on everything. I didn't have to build anything. I didn't have to recreate or try and create some system to grow food. Everything's done for me. The lights are brilliant. They're so easy to move and manage and it doesn't limit you. Many of these types of home growing systems limit you with the size of plants you can grow because of the lights, because the plants will grow outside of them. These, we can move the lights with our plants so we can continue to grow tomatoes and peppers and larger plants. We're not just stuck growing greens. And I love that I can move these towers by myself too. I was really tired of shoveling heavy compost and having to rely on people to help me or people to build me raised beds. I just wanted complete control over my gardens to do what I wanted when I wanted and the towers allow me to do that. All right, we got those on. Let me show you the timer. All right, and here is our timer. I You set it to the time. So you've got 6 p.m. here. So if you want your lights off from you know, 6 p.m. to whatever, 1 a.m. Um, you just flip it up when you want it on and flip it down when you want it off. I run mine in the garage, so I don't really care when they're on. And I often have to flip them off a lot when I'm recording in here. So by spinning it, you can just spin this. Look at there's a ladybug. Hello. Right, oh, he fell. So, I'm gonna turn it on. Actually, I'm gonna wind it all the way to here. Okay, so that's on. If you hit the switch right here, they just stay on. So you gotta turn it to timer mode. And that's how I turn them off. I just flip it around. Okay, so I went ahead and made some of this. And I added oranges just because I want it to be drinkable in a little bit larger amount. Sometimes when I'm doing immunity shots, it's lemon with peel, ginger, um, and I like to do cayenne pepper. And those, you're just taking like two tablespoons and shooting them down. It's a good liver cleanse. This, I want it to be a larger shot because these are the bottles I have. So I'm going to do three lemons, maybe four two peeled oranges to give it a little bit of sweetness and just cut it a little bit. And then I've got my rosemary and a hefty chunk of, well, not that much. I'll do a hefty chunk of ginger. This is my Revo 830. Love it. I'll put a link to that below. This is why I love it. Just toss it in. And I have a whole case of lemons and grapefruit and two cases of oranges. I've been going through a lot of them. A lot of these lemons I'm going to have to juice and freeze because there's a lot of them. But I order from food co-ops. So what that's choosing, I order for, from food co-ops and I am in a food conscious area. So there's a lot of people around here that really care about the quality of their food. So we have co-ops. Um, someone else headed up the citrus co-op that I'm a friend with. And then I head up the Azure Drop for our area. And I have lived in areas where there weren't co-ops close by and the best thing to do is just start one. I actually was a part of a co-op and the woman, basically all the food at the grocery stores, Whole Foods, Publix, whatever your grocery store is, and unless you have a local one, like we have a local grocery store type chain, a lot of that food comes from the same places and then the trucks take it to the different stores. We were ordering directly from the warehouses and so she headed that up. It was about an hour or so from my house so I started running one. So there are ways to get creative and find cases of fresh produce in season and um, like coordinate with people in your community. You just got to be willing to research it, dig into finding solutions and then finding people who are the same and like minded who are interested in rallying behind you with it.
You can tell how thick it is. Maybe you can tell. Mmm. Really good. Potent, thick, delicious. It needs more rosemary. All right, so for the next batch, I'll add more rosemary. For this one, I'm just going to fill these little jars up and leave a little space on the top. And these are going to go into the freezer. Almost the exact right amount. So I have a lot of lemons to use still. I'm like barely putting a dent in the lemons. That's okay. So I'm going to seal these up, toss them in the freezer. I will do another batch. Tomorrow I have, actually I'll do two, one, two, I have eight, I have 16 more of these jars. So I will definitely do that, which will get rid of, how many lemons did I use? Oh, maybe get rid of like 10 more lemons. These are super fun. Just to kind of grab as a, you don't want to hold juice, but you want to do something cleansing to the body. These are awesome. They are really good with cayenne pepper too. The next batch I'll probably put cayenne pepper in them. Okay. So off to the freezer these go. And we are going to juice the mango and Swiss chard. All right, so the pulp goes to the chickens. If you don't have chickens, you can worm compost. I'll show you my worm compost in about a month. I'll have it going again. I have a really great one. And we're just going to continue the process. Now with mango, it can be a little bit gritty and this is going to make a lot of juice. So I need a different container. So I'm going to strain this as it's coming out. That was it. Yeah, that was really like so for this I'm going to add some oranges and a grapefruit for one to stretch this and I love mango but mango is really a thick juice and I'm not going for a thick juice but I want to use up the mango so I also like mango and Swiss chard together. 